The Anti-Defamation League says yesterday's synagogue shooting is likely the deadliest attack on the Jewish community in the United States in its history and notes anti-Semitic attacks have been on the rise. There were close to 2,000 incidents of anti-Semitism last year. That's a 57 percent hike from the year before. Now, in general, hate crimes are also up altogether. Last year, incidents rose 12.5% in the nation's largest cities. That's the highest jump in a decade. Let's bring in Frank Figluzzi, MSNBC national security analyst, former assistant director of counterintelligence for the FBI, and chief operating officer for ETS risk management. Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and national director of the Anti-Defamation League. Great to have both of you here on this. Frank, uh, as you put on your old hats, many of them, why are we seeing this national rise in hate crimes, of course, including the Jewish American community? So obviously, hate is a complex uh, subject, and there are many variables that go into people acting out violently. But clearly, there's a couple that we know of that have been studied, and they've been studied because we have a great body of scholarly work with regard to radicalization on the international terrorism front that can be applied to this. So one of those is disenfranchisement, people feeling like they're not a part of what's happening economically, culturally, or otherwise. And so there's this desire to put it on the other, the stranger. Someone else is causing our problem and we need to lash out toward them. The other is a culture of enablement and, it's, and, and, and a mindset of it's okay in this environment we're in, we're not getting slapped down. There aren't the barriers, the speed bumps to acting out and speaking out um, in a hateful or violent manner. And we can talk all day about whether the White House is enabling and facilitating, but I do think, Richard, that there are, there's an analogy here between online radicalization of uh, radical uh, Islamic extremism and what we're seeing in our culture today, which is people get looking for, usually unstable people, looking for something to belong to, a cause greater than themselves, and feeling like it's okay to do this because no one's telling me I can't, and the top of the heap, the administration seems to be fostering that mentality. You know, uh, and as you say that, Frank, I want us to go back to that full screen, that graphic that we're showing, uh, Jonathan, as we discuss the micro of the macro yeah. is the Jewish community in America. Just looking at these numbers here, yeah. uh, and you say, look at that proportion, 50% representation of incidents that are religion-based. Yeah, I mean, the Jewish community in the United States continues to be the most frequently targeted faith-based minority around hate crimes. And, you know, I would agree with, uh, with Frank about the phenomenon of how people can be radicalized online in particular. Yeah. But anti-Semitism has been a pernicious and persistent element of society for thousands of years. Right. Jews as a minority in many different countries have often been the victims of scapegoating and slander, and we're seeing it here today. 2% of the country's population, 50%, uh, as you saw there, yeah. of a religious-based hate crimes. Yeah. What's going to work then to counter balance this unfortunate imbalance. Well, keep in mind that we'd seen a decrease in anti-Semitic incidents in the United States for almost two decades before the this, this surge in 2016 and 2017. Why was that? Well, number one, I think there are ways we can approach it. Education. I mean, the fact of the matter is anti-bias education in classrooms has a lot to do with exposing young people to the fact that people, despite their differences, we all come together. I think the media has something to do with it. Now social media has allowed mm -hmm. the worst kind of stereotypes to spread before, as Frank said, there were speed bumps. But we also need our leaders to lead. You know, last year we saw a 57% increase. That included almost a doubling of anti-Semitic incidences in K-12 schools. And we saw an almost 90% increase of anti-Semitism at colleges and universities. So whether it's the President of the United States or a university president, or a PTA president. We need people in positions of authority to interrupt hate when it happens and to speak out and create environments that are welcoming to everyone long before there's an act of violence. You know, Frank, uh, you're super, uh, you're very aware, super aware of, of, of uh, this very issue of hate crimes as we were just talking about, given your experience in this space with Jonathan's, and we look at anti-Semitism, we know it's there. But you, you see that number, uh, and, and when we brought it up yesterday, 
you, you are shocked, aren't you? Uh, you are surprised, you're also reminded, and then you say, okay, what can be done different? And Jonathan was sharing some of the ideas, one or two of those. What have you seen uh, in government that works? Well, the, the government has been wrestling with years about how to counter uh, radicalization generally on the international uh, scene, and it's a complex issue, but you've got to give people another way to identify with something. If they're trying to fill that hole with hate that's inside them, you've got to give them other things and role models. So people need to speak out, you know, and, and we should see our political leaders coming out far more than they are, um, quite frankly, yeah. and saying this is wrong, we can't accept this. And then education, as has already been said, is, is a hugely important thing. Exposure to that thing that you seemingly hate gets you um, an increased understanding that we're not very different, are we? So exposure, education, and that role modeling that there's another thing you can identify with that will tell you that's not right. Yeah. You, can, you can belong to this group over here, and, and we're not hateful people. Jonathan, uh, finish the us here, 15 seconds. You've got four, 25 offices across the country. Mm -hmm. What's the emotional tenor of the community? Anxiety, concern, but also resolve. You know, there are more than 40 events across the United States that we're participating in. Many other communities vigils. are... Vigils. Vigils, services, ceremonies, and many other communities are coming together. We will not be daunted. We will not be frightened. We will move forward. As a country. Indeed. Jonathan Greenblatt, thank you. Frank Fagluzzi, as always, thank you, sir, too.